Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we are back on GTA 5 Online and today we have received the Shyster Deviant. Well, actually, in fact, it came out yesterday. But I decided I'll make the video today as I was doing a Forza video yesterday. So today, yesterday, we received the Shyster Deviant, the first ever DLC Shyster we have received. The last one we had was the Cries of Crossfire, whatever that's called in this game, the Fuller Sade, I think it's called, whatever. It was, um, that was the first and only one we've had in this game. Now we've got this one, uh, which is based off a heavily tuned AMC Javelin. And yeah, there it is. Let's go and have a look at it in the flesh, which is over there. Price-wise, it's under 600,000, which is not too bad. Not too bad at all, uh, considering that you can buy an RC car for 1.6 million. But there we go. Uh, there it is. So originally it was based off of a uh, AMC Javelin. Has got slight reminiscence of uh, Plymouth Barracuda at the back, or Hemicuda, with a black um, sort of rear light panel and the light design. But uh, most of this is... Whoa, we're lagging. <laughs> oh dear. We appear to have uh, broken the game somehow. Okay, we'll, we'll catch after you. <laughs> we'll catch... So then, we are now back. Unfortunately, I don't know what happened there. We just had to load back in again. So yeah, this thing's actually based off of the Ring Brothers AMC Javelin AMX. They have named it the Defiant. So there we go. It's a custom uh, a version of an AMC Javelin, which I think has got a little bit of Hemicuda in the rear. Let's jump inside and this is what it's, see what it sounds like and the interior design. The sound, uh, startup sound kind of expected. Uh, interior, I think they've nicked this from the Sylvestra in terms of the dials and the dashboard. Let's just take a look at the customization. What are we doing today? Now, of course, as you know, I like to base my cars off of the real life equivalent of what they're based off, and that's what I'm going to try and do now. Bumpers, let's take a look at this. So we've got a few bumper options here. So we've got remove splitter, which actually looks quite good. And then we've got uh, plastic splitter, primary, I'm not going to read it out, just scroll through. So you know, not too bad in terms of um, front bumper customization. At the rear we've just got a little tiny step there. Pointless customization for four grand I think, but there we go. Uh, in real life this actually has a chrome bumper, so it'd be this one here, or maybe even that one. I think it's more that one. We'll go for that one. Engine wise, nothing in there. Exhausts. So you've got rear exit, which are these huge exits here, which kind of suits the rear end a bit more like that. And then we've got squared off ones like this, which I think this is what it looks like in real life, so we'll have it like that. Grill-wise, so we've got single grill. Just going to scroll through it again, as I normally do. There's 12 different customization options to this, which is really good. That's got some unique customization here. And again, I'm going to keep it as it is. Alright, so the bonnet wires, let's just scroll through here and have a look what's going on. I think in real life it has a carbon bonnet. Or is it painted? I think it might be that one painted. There you go. Uh, horn, blah blah blah. Uh, lights, we've got normal headlights, which you can't change the colour of here, which uh, I should really get a, a um, Arena Wars workshop where you can change the headlight colour. That'd be pretty cool. We scroll down here, we've got yellow pinstripes, I'm not going to bother reading it again. In real life, that's the livery it has, but we're going to just have a quick look. Scrolling down, we've got a few different liveries here, some like NASCAR kind of style. Liveries. Scroll down, respray, so I think um, I'm going to keep it in that colour as it is, not chrome. Don't want it in chrome, so it's in yellow, secondary colour. What bits did that change? Ah, so it changes these bits here, which are chrome in real life, so let's change that to chrome. Like that. Looks quite nice with all the chrome. Trim colour, so we can actually change the interior somehow. Oh, it's just the seats. Uh, I don't know what it has in real life. I can't really see what it has inside, but I'm just going to make it up by myself, which I'm going to put it in like a tan or cream, or maybe even brown. Brown and yellow? Not so sure about that, but... Bleach brown would be fair enough. Roof. So we've got a livery roof, and then we've got a carbon roof. Which I think in real life it just has a carbon roof like that, so I think that's what we're going to do. Spoiler! Oh, we've got quite a few spoiler options here. Just going to scroll through it here. 
You can really sort of turn this into a, like a standard version of the car, which is a really cool idea. I like that. In real life, it has this spoiler, uh, kind of this sort of spoiler. So I'm going to keep that. Suspension wise, uh, it was pretty low. Might lower that. Possibly. Now, wheels. I think it's sports wheels. Uh, I've, if you've seen me with this car before, I have used it in my best sounding cars video. So I, but I can't remember entirely what this sounds like. It's been a little while since I did that video. So there were the wheels I used, the uh, 59 wheels, and then I put them in black because they look very, very, very similar to the real life ones. And there they are. They are huge and less spoky. The spokes a bit further apart in real life. And there is. The um, the car. I don't remember what it's called. A deviant. There we go. Yes. So let's exit and give it a drive. Unfortunately, it's dark outside, which is a bit of a, bit of a shame. But there we go. Hopefully, it doesn't freeze again. <laughs> that would be pretty irritating. Oh yeah. This game seems to be taking even longer to load these days. Some craziness going on in these sessions. Oh my God. Uh. See, you can't even play on this game anymore without getting attacked. <laughs> I forgot to put myself in passive. I do that every day. Every time I jump on this game and do a video, I always put myself in passive. But today I just had to forget. And every time I put myself in passive, no one comes near me. But of course they had to come near me today when I'm not in passive. <laughs> Sod's law, isn't it? Right, so just driving this thing around is it's quite a pleasant thing to drive, really. Apart from me being an absolute moron. Acceleration's quite slow, it feels like. It's not a very fast car, but if you look at the specs when you bought the car, the, they weren't particularly amazing. <laughs> traffic in this game. I've been playing Forza for ages and I'm used to it being like, with no traffic at all. Yeah, just driving this thing around is not a bad car to drive. It doesn't feel particularly fast. I know it's, it, I haven't tuned this thing up in any way mechanically, but it just doesn't feel particularly fast. Considering it's meant to be some kind of like heavily modified version of a classic car, muscle car even, you'd expect it to be quite fast, but it really just doesn't feel very fast at all. Uh, it's in the muscle class, so I can imagine it's probably in the lower end of the muscle class. Let's put that theory to the test. Let's jump on to online jobs, play job, my job. Again, I need to make myself a new test track, really. Click this over to muscle. Time of day, we definitely want it to be noon. My character's all beaten up now from <laughs> that attack with a little weenie Izzy Arena Wars thingy. Let's think about the competition this car would have. I, as you know, when I do these kind of comparisons, I uh, look at the price versus the uh, type of car. So this is, of course, a classic muscle car that's been obviously modified, but it's still a classic muscle car originally. Uh, it's about about 600k in terms of purchasing it, and of course it's in the muscle class. So something around that kind of build. Whoa! Yeah, this handling is really bad. <laughs> 
in terms of its uh, rear end grip anyway doesn't feel very fast when you're accelerating but when you're going trying to go around a corner it just sticks its tail end out right <laughs> whoa see whoa. It feels like this thing really does need some more power. In terms of its front end grip, it's pretty good. When you're at um, high speeds, though, it can be a little bit squiffy, but uh, definitely at slower speeds, it seems to handle quite well front end wise, but rear end barely has any grip at all. Definitely a lack of power this car has. So uh, 1 minute 27, well, that's not too bad, it's around Dominator sort of speeds, the normal Dominator around this track. Normally when it comes to uh, cars in these games, or in this game even really, the, uh, the time between different performances is quite low like they only literally have microseconds between the uh, lap times according to Bruffy anyway the uh, rather famous youtuber with the uh, car testing in this game definitely there's just microseconds between the different cars it's kind of pointless really it's all to do with preference if you which one you prefer to have out, out of the two rather than saying oh this is the best car ever but making others redundant Right, so uh, let's have a look at competition, what else it has in this uh, lineup we could be up against. So, there's still quite a few cars here. So, these are the standard ones. So, let's look at mine. So, we've got the Virgo, we've got the Tulip. The Chamus of the Tulip. The Tulips are one of the newer ones. That might be one that might be worth testing between the Deviant. Just having a quick flick through and look at the specs. You see the braking on the, on the Dominator is a lot better, which kind of surprised me why it was a little bit slower, but that's probably because of my previous experience and maybe because of it, the brakes are a bit more stronger than I thought. Maybe, I don't know. We'd have to... Speed-wise, the Deviant and the... So the Dominator and the Deviant are very similar in terms of its performance-wise, um, but the Dominator somehow feels a bit faster, I seem to remember. Maybe I'm just wrong. Yeah, this car is an absolute beast, the uh, Sabre Turbo. You can see that the acceleration is absolutely ginormous. And Tampa's really good. I think that one of the, a good test is this one. The braking's not as good as the Deviant. Uh, speed's around the same, but the acceleration is quite a bit more. So, and that's quite a good test. And also, they're around the same sort of price range. I think there's a couple hundred K difference, which is obviously quite a, little mo quite a lot of money. I said this one's the better looking out of the two, though. Apart from the stripe, it's a little bit untextured, it's a little bit rough with the textures. Oh yeah, this thing feels a lot better already. Quite bouncy though, whoa! Uh. Yeah, it feels a lot faster. Well, obviously the acceleration was a lot better than the other car. Whoa! It's just the braking that's not as good. And it feels like the handling's not as good either. It's got very, very soft dampering. <laughs> that's really bouncy. It handles quite well. It's actually got quite a lot of rear end grip in comparison to the uh, Deviant. Whoa. As we say in that, it just starts to spin off there, but that's just because I've been a bit vigorous with the accelerator, I think. Yeah, but the front end grip's not as good as the Deviant, so I would have said. Easier, the handling itself is just easier to control with this one. As you can tell, I've shaved off quite a lot of time. I know I just crashed the stairs because I was staring at the, ti uh, the timer down there, but you saw, I sh we've shaved off quite a lot of seconds in comparison to the Deviant because the acceleration was just so much better. Although the handling was a little bit more bouncy, which could probably be a bit problematic when you're uh, online in free roam, because there's quite a lot of hills and bumps, especially in the city. 
uh, maybe go over the curbs and things. But the defin I don't know, there's something about the defin just feels quite slow. I don't know, I just, in terms of ex acceleration wise, and also because the rear end sticks out quite a bit, also causes problems with the handling. So the my track really is designed for handling, where a lot of these cars have got quite high end top speeds, even though the, the Tulip and the Deviant have got very similar top speeds according to those statistics. Uh, where's the muscle? There it is. One last uh, car to have a look at. I just realised I left it on night as well. I need to have a fiddle about with the settings of this race, really, to sort of uh, bring it back to daytime and not at night and that sort of thing. So they've got the Tulip. That was a pretty good car. I like that. Now, I think the Sabre will decimate them all here because it's just such a powerful car. I'm not entirely sure whether that's tuned, looking at the stats. I'm not sure if I tuned that up or not in the past, a long, long time ago. So this has got quite a good top speed, and acceleration's not too bad either. But when I drove it around, it just doesn't feel that that good. I don't know why. What would cause that? So of course we've got the Ellie, the Dominator GTX as well. We've got the new uh, Click, which is pretty. That's a pretty good car. The handling's not as good. The acceleration's not as good as the um, both cars we just tested today. And they're pretty similar price uh, brackets. So I think we'll try this one out. Being the last final test, as well as it being a classic muscle car as well. It's kind of the same type of car. Although, and also, you got this thing free. If you uh, think it was like if you played on Christmas Day or something like that, you got this free. So, it's going to be something quite a lot of people are going to have. And yeah, that steering is very, very good. That's really good. doesn't like bumps that much either, but it's not as bad as the uh, Tulip, I would have said. This is fast. This is actually a really quick car. Ooh, you can tell it's really not liking these bumps either. But I think that's Rockstar's uh, method of patching the speed glitch, where you, when you went over bumps it sped the car up. So that's obviously its method is to do that. Crashed in them into those barriers there, that was kind of misjudgment. Yeah, the front. Although it, it, it's very arrow, um, well, very very quick the steering on this car, but sometimes it can lose its front end grip. Whoa! Yeah, look at that. That's, that's a pretty quick car. Won't crash into that signpost again. So there we go. So out of the three cars, there, the click is very very quick. It's one minute sixteen. So that's. 12 seconds faster than the Deviant, and it's, um, well, it's about 6 seconds uh, faster than the Tulip. So there we go then. That's a pretty good test. I thought the Deviant didn't really feel very fast. That's, that was one of my complaints I first thought of when we uh, first tr uh, tried it out. I just thought it doesn't feel very fast. Considering it's meant to be some kind of, um, like, modified muscle car you'd expect them in quite a bit faster and this has only been visually customized in uh, in real life i'm not quite sure i'm not really into the custom scene so i'm not quite sure but yeah it's quite surprisingly slow which i'm quite surprised about to be honest but there we go so that's the, the value of the car is not bad i said the customization's not too bad either um you've got quite a few bumper options you could turn it into a, a barracuda sort of look really with that little uh, boot spoiler on it, take, put the four exhaust on the back and um, take the front splitter off. Make it look Barracuda-ish, but uh, it doesn't really look that, that similar to a Barracuda. It's more AMC Javelin than anything else. The Click, that's a, that's a pretty quick car. I didn't actually expect it to be that quick. That's pretty good. The Tulip as well, that was, that was a quick car. The only trouble was with the Tulip, it was quite bouncy, where the Deviant was actually one car that wasn't really impacted too much by the speed humps, which the other two were. Good, good start up then. Make sure I'm definitely in passive as well. Got some people in this session. Yeah, we're in passive. Good, good, good. So 
so then, my overall view of this car then. To be honest, with the lap time, it's not particularly positive, to be honest. I really like the car. It is actually a really cool looking car. Uh, was there a need for that? It was a pretty good car. It looks pretty good. I would say it's not the best looking car ever. Like you saw, I think the Tulip is probably the better looking out of the, out of the three we tested today. Uh, but the, the way it looks is pretty good. I think it's quite a pleasant car to look at. Quite, It's quite a nice car to drive, but also quite difficult when it's in the city environment because the way how the back end just seems to flick out quite a lot. Yeah, handling's definitely not its uh, its favourite thing to do. So there we go. There is the Deviant. So 500 grand is not too bad. You can do the car CEO. You could probably get that money within probably an hour and a half in a free good session. Uh, if you've done the glitch where you get high-end cars every time, you could do that within within about th an hour and a half-ish. So it's not too bad. Not too bad uh, price range. Better than the RC Bandito at least. Uh, it's a bit more expensive than the Tulip and the Click, considering I think the Click is something you, can, you get for free, unless if you didn't get it for free, I'm not entirely sure of the price. Let's just have a quick check uh, down here. So I don't play this game very often anymore, so I'm a bit sort of loose on the old knowledge. So yeah, the Click's actually quite an expensive car. There's no wonder why it was uh, a lot quicker. It's 900 grand. But then you can, if you played it in that time, you'd have it free, so that's quite a good car to get for free. And the Tulip, 718,000. So again... That's another car that's pretty expensive. That's like it's 200 grand more than the Deviant. So at the end of the day, really, value for money-wise, the Deviant is actually quite a good car. I didn't actually realise how expensive a lot of these cars were. So yeah, the Deviant's not too bad in terms of its value. I think it's quite good for its value. It's not the best handling thing ever. It's not the fastest thing ever. But it's got some pretty decent customization. It looks good. Sounds decent. And the price is reasonable. So that's that's quite a good review actually. Yeah, as I said. It's turned out to be quite positive. But then the Tulip, I think, looks better. In my opinion, to my eyes, it looks better. It looks, I think it's a better looking car. But then I pay the price for that. It's quite a lot more expensive. So there we go. It all depends on what you like and what you don't like, really. And whether you're buying it for the, the best car in the class or not. Because obviously the Deviant's not going to be something you're going to be buy, uh, buying for, definitely for not being the fastest muscle car in the, in the race. Because obviously it's not exactly that fast. Where the other two may not look as good in your opinion or may not have the best customization so whatever whatever your choice is well then hope you found this video helpful today hopefully uh, it was fairly entertaining and i hopefully see you in the next video see you